It's Friday, August 5th, 2022, and welcome to episode 14 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, the city is looking for your input about public art. WIDA is asking for your help as they create a vision for 2050. Celebrate International Cat Day this Monday by adopting a feline of your own. Plus, we sit down with Post publisher Adam Gillett to give you a look at where we've been and where we're going. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. As noted by Americans for the Arts, quote, cities with an active and dynamic cultural scene are more attractive to individuals and businesses. Public art can be a key factor in establishing a unique and culturally active place, end quote. Alameda is in the process of creating a public arts master plan. To that end, the city has posted a short online survey to gather your input. What does Alameda mean to you? What sort of art should represent that? And where should that art be installed? To make your voice heard, head over to alamedaca.gov and search Public Art Survey. Another group seeking your input is the San Francisco Bay Area Water Emergency Transportation Authority, or WIDA, the folks who oversee the San Francisco Bay Ferry Lines. They are truly looking ahead with their Bay Ferry 2050 project. With six distinct focus areas, Bay Ferry 2050 is a roadmap to the future of transit across the bay. The focus areas include not only the ferry lines, but emergency response and environmental stewardship. You can get a full look at the scope of the project by visiting bayferry2050.org. That's Bay Ferry, followed by the numerals 2050.org. You'll see a link to take the quick priorities poll. You can also click on the Share Your Voice menu item at bayferry2050.org. This Monday is International Cat Day. The Alameda Animal Shelter has teamed with the Alameda Free Library for a special event from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Bay Farm Library branch. Crafts, coffee, books, and, of course, cats. You can greet the kitties and adopt one for your own. The first 10 adopters will receive a free gift to help you ease Tabby into their new home. Details at alamedaca.gov. Search feline. Our popular walking history tours return next Saturday, August 13th. That's when Dennis Evanoski will begin a three-week series on the architecture of the East End. The series gets rolling with a look at the 19th and 20th century styles, along with an examination of Christmas Tree Lane, why Lincoln Avenue bends, and just what's the story with those little houses. Later tours will explore Alameda's largest home, as well as the houses that make up the original town of Alameda. To sign up, visit alamedapost.com slash tours. You'll save over 10% by signing up for the three-tour package. For a preview of what Dennis has in store, visit alamedapost.com slash history. You can find out some more fascinating history of Alameda thanks to the latest from our own Steve Gorman, who continues his Alameda Treasures series with an in-depth look at 1717 San Antonio Avenue. This three-part installment explores this amazing home that has remained in the same family for over 120 years. Steve is one of our great features writers, and you can find his Alameda treasures at alamedapost.com history. Now a look at upcoming events of interest to the Alameda community. Way back in Episode 2 of the Postcast, we told you about the great work being done by the Alameda Crankers and their monthly Cars and Coffee get-together. Well, the first Saturday of the month is upon us, so head on over to 2694 Blanding Ave, the Greer Family Mortuary parking lot from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. Check out some classic cars, enjoy donuts and coffee, and donate to Alameda Meals on Wheels this Saturday. Sunday afternoon means brunch, and what better accompaniment than jazz? Join the Alameda Jazz Collective for their monthly performance at the Preacher's Daughter, 1629 Park Street, this Sunday at 2 p.m. Find the Alameda Jazz Collective on Facebook. This Wednesday, head out to Alameda Point for a preview of a big event coming later this year. This October, Beer City Alameda comes to the point for a beer festival featuring brewers from all over the Bay Area. This Wednesday, Faction Brewing in Spirits Alley is hosting a launch event, including music, tastings, and a preview of October's 5 and 10K road race. Find Beer City Alameda on Facebook. Now for Alameda news around the web. You may have seen some of the incredible machinery made by Sail Drone, headquartered here in Alameda. Their crewless craft are doing some important work across the country as hurricane hunters in Florida, mapping hurricanes from the ocean surface and providing critical data to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. For a full look at this amazing work, 
visit alamedapost.com slash external. Want to do some good and maybe ease some pain at the pump? The American Red Cross is offering quite the incentive for those who donate blood this month, a chance to win free gas for a year. Even if you don't win, you'll walk away with a $10 e-gift card for a merchant of your choice. Visit alamedapost.com slash external. There's a lot of folks involved in bringing you the Alameda Post, writers, photographers, historians, some guy with a microphone. On this edition of the Postcast, I want to introduce you to our publisher, Adam Gillett. If you've ever attended one of our walking history tours, you've met Adam. In fact, that's what led me to becoming part of the family. Welcome to the Postcast, Adam. Thank you for having me, Scott. It's great to be here. Let's, uh, let's start with the obvious. Why the Alameda Post? Well, two big reasons. Number one, after COVID, everyone has been doom scrolling. And that, by that, I mean they've been looking on their phones and following the news all the time. And there is no, or there has not been any current digital source for Alameda News. So I looked at that and realized, well, what can I do to provide a, a service that would be easy to read on your phone, easy to read on your computer, easy to read on your tablet? And then the second part of that is that people don't want to wait and get news once a week. People, because of they've gotten used to getting news online, want to see news every day. And so we've set up a service where we're publishing new content almost every day of the week. Uh, we do take Saturdays off, I'm sorry, but uh, we're busy uh, at our historical tours with Dennis. So uh, we have a good reason. What is it about Alameda that makes it unique in the Bay Area? Oh, that's easy. We are the only town in the Bay Area that doesn't have a freeway running through the middle of our town. And that means that anybody that comes to Alameda chose to come here. There's a reason they're coming to Alameda. They're not passing through like they're going through Oakland on 580. They've chose to come here. It's a small town. It's a hometown. It's, it's a place where everybody knows each other. Our population's under 80,000, and it's easy to get involved and to get out and meet the people who make the decisions in your community. You've put together... Pretty impressive team in a fairly short period of time. How did how did that happen? Well, Alameda is full of talented people, and I have been really lucky to find out that people are interested in participating and want to be a part of this project. People are really excited to have a, a source of news that they can enjoy on a daily basis and that they can feel uh, like they can be a part of. What is the future of the Post hold? Well, we want to grow. We want to expand our coverage. We are very excited about, about the upcoming election and plan to be providing a lot of in-depth coverage and hopefully some events uh, to go along with the election. Uh, not ready to fully discuss those just yet, but please do keep uh, uh, tuned and we'll let you know. Uh, but we're also looking to expand our coverage in other areas. Uh, there are, uh, as I said, many communities in Alameda that are underrepresented that we would like to get coverage of and to expand coverage of. Uh, we're working hard to grow our community calendar because there really has been no one central place in Alameda where people can go and find out what's going on. And we've uh, set up a calendar that is self-serve. People can sign up and post their own events. And that way we can share all of the events with the community. What's the best compliment you've received in this endeavor? The one that keeps you going and makes you say, yeah, we're on the right path. I've gotten two similar compliments from two different people, uh, both of whom I really respect a lot in the community, who said, thank you very much for being impartial and not being another blog. And Alameda has lots of wonderful opinions, but not a lot of opportunity for straight up news. And I was really pleased to hear that because that's really what we're trying to do. We do. We're hoping that the news we present, the information we present, is as unbiased as possible. We don't want to favor one perspective over the other. Thank you, Adam, for joining us this week. We really appreciate what you, what you have done and look forward to what we are doing. It is a pleasure, and I am really grateful to all the wonderful people who have contributed their time and skills and efforts to help us get to where we are today, and I'm so excited to see where we can go in the future. And I thank you all for your support. Thanks to our publisher, Adam Gillett, for spending time with us this week. That's it for this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Visit our website, alamedapost.com slash newsletter to sign up for our weekly newsletter. It's free and we'll never sell or give your personal information to anyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Find the Postcast wherever you get your podcast or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. 
I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday with episode 15 of the Alameda Postcast.